folks, welcome back to another episode. How you feeling there, Big Jim? Um, I'm hungry, not gonna lie. Really? Yeah, I didn't eat much breakfast. Really? Lizzie. Beer, beer brats or? Oh, oh I said we might. Hey, Lizzie, 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 Millie, Lizzie, Millie, 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 Lizzie, what are you doing? Anyways, how's it going, folks? Welcome back to another episode. We are starting the day off in the shop. We've got some tackle organization to get going on here. How'd that go? Mountain Chew. Casey liked you it. You shake it up? Yeah, he no. just like opens it like a dummy. Really? Mountain Chew, huh? Getting fueled? That's right. Yeah. Ready That's to do cool. the do? So we've got this going on, okay? You know, we're trying to do some ice fishing today. It is in fact warm. It's like 40 degrees, 45-ish. And it's supposed to be like 50 degrees every day for like the next week. So this is probably our last day to ice fish. So we went to the store and got every, these are tip-ups. These are, I mean, this is old school stuff, folks. These are $5. This is all I had, okay? Normally I use Felix's and I only have one of his. So we went out and got a bunch. This is like by far, if you want to catch a bunch of bass, the most effective way for ice fishing is to set a bunch of tip ups with live minnows. So Zach is actually on his way. He's bringing minnows. We did get some wax worms. We had to go to the store and buy some of this. I didn't have any like four pound line laying around. So I had to buy some, some hooks. So we got to get this rigged up. Today's objective is to catch as many between prob, basically as, I'd say as many under 14. We need to bring a tape measure so we can quickly do it. Oh, there's, uh, how's there's this one, one on here. There's a tape measure on there? Oh yeah, there is. Oh, that's pretty neat. So I would say, what do you think? Under 14? Where's 14 on this thing? Uh, right here. That's a pretty big bass. Oh, maybe 12? Maybe 12. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll see once we start catching them what, this, uh, what the size is because basically this, I, don't, I could actually go look at the chart when we got it electric fish. I think he put a chart together. For sure, anything under 12 needs to be cold out. Um, I don't know if we'd put anything bigger. Probably, hey, 12 is probably a good number. Been in, down in Texas before where we have like management lakes and stuff and they basically say anything over 12 that you should just take out. So the rule is anything under 12, we're gonna actually take and transport to the cabin pond from the original backyard pond. Just not really to help the cabin pond really. Now we've stocked the cabin pond with minnows and stocked it with bluegill so we've got the forage base figured out now it's time to stock with bass now the cabin pond the whole idea behind the cabin pond is to make it a catch and cook only pond meaning like when you catch something you're eating it i mean you can release it if you want to but like the idea is it's mainly for catch and cook since it's right by the cabin cabin vibes you guys know the deal but these bass are not necessarily for that the reason why we're taking the bass out of the main backyard pond to take down the cabin pond is to reduce the amount of largemouth in the same size largemouth let me say reduce the same the amount of same size largemouth in one pond and put them in the other to kind of divide them up. Now, when we got an electric fish, meaning like shock, um, and did surveys last year, he, I think, did he say rec, did he say 75 to 100 to take out? I think is what he was saying, which is a lot, like per year, which is a lot. There's no way we're gonna catch that today, not even close. I would say the goal today would be like 12. 12 would be like a solid goal. If the fishing's good, 12. Otherwise, it might be a little bit less than that. But this is kind of the first step since ice fishing is a good time, um, in my opinion, to transport fish because the water is cool. You don't have to worry about the heat and killing fish. Springtime's probably a little bit better, but it's like, what else do you do when the water's frozen? You go, you want to go fishing. So we're going ice fishing. So like I said, we're going to try to catch bass. I mean, we'll catch any size bass, but if it's over 12, we'll release it. If it's under 12, we're going to keep it. And we're going to try to transport those bass to the cabin pond and see how many we can do today. But before we jump into it, I have to let you guys know on February 1st, okay? If you guys are new to the channel, you don't know anything about it. On February 1st, we are dropping the Beefcake Club membership. Now, if you guys don't know what this is, there's going to be exclusive live streams, exclusive videos where only Beefcake members can see it. You're going to get these special badges and little emojis and stuff next to your name when you comment in, in live streams and stuff like that. And then also the gaming content, okay? Playing Hunter Call of the Wild, gaming. Instead of starting a whole new gaming channel, I'm just gonna put it all into the Beefcake Club membership package. And it will be available on February 1st. So mark your calendars. We're getting close. February 1st is when it's gonna launch. Um, There'll be links in the description on February 1st. There'll be like a little join button next to my name on February 1st. So have to let you guys know that the ultimate Beefcake Club membership starts on February 1st. You basically, like I said, you get bonus videos behind the scenes, blue Bloopers, live streams, gaming, the whole nine. And if there's other things that you guys want, um, part of that membership, let me know in the comment section down below. So with that being said, look at this. Lizzie. Why does she want this so bad? Lizzie, why do you want a piece of paper? Lucy, you wanna go ice fishing? You are about the worst dog to take ice fishing because you try to eat all of our fish. Same thing with you, Lucy. Millie, whatever your name is. Hey, no, no, don't jump on me. So with that being said, that's the spiel. We've got to get these guys rigged up, meaning we gotta spool them all up with line. That's gonna take a fat second. Um, and then we're gonna run out there, hopefully set them all out and get them ready to give it a ding and see how many large you do. I'm excited because like the, the most efficient way to catch bass is by doing this. Bunch of minnows because then you run, you chase them, you slide. It's going to be a good time. You guys stay tuned.
Thanks, Will. We made it down to the pond, Lucy. Good girl, Lucy. You got it. No, you got it, Melee. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So we got everything rigged up. We're down here at Pond Banjo. Give, give her a dangle. See what happens. Shoot. Yeah, you'd be all right. I mean, if you follow through, it's a good title. So, I mean, I, yeah, true. I'm not mad. You know, as long as I'm not the one following through, I don't care. The dogs are, they're testing it out. They're running around over there. Goodness. Oh. Oh, this dog is so freaking crazy. So we made it down to the pond. Uh, like I said, we are on... We're on tip-up duty, but basically needing some largies, largie duty. Um, we'll have to empty the tip-up bucket, I guess, to transport them, which is fine. Um, so basically, they were, if you guys are new to the channel, that is the cabin pond. The cabin's actually behind that hill there. Cabin pond, normal backyard pond. Too many small bass, zero bass. So we're going to take bass from here and put them over here. It's technically one body of water connected by a creek, um, so it's not really transporting from one. Like, technically, it's not one body to another, but for the sake of the video, it is going from one pond to another. Since there's no bass over there, unless we stopped at, like, I don't know, a few hundred minnows, and then we did, how many, was it 25 bluegills? 20, yeah, 24, 25 bluegills. So, I mean, there's a decent amount of bluegills, and we try to get small bluegills, small enough to where bass could actually eat them. Um, so then, we're, I think we're gonna stick to the rule of under 12. If it's under 12, or 12 and a half-ish, um, we'll take it out and put it over here, anything else we will set back. We also are hungry, and we didn't wanna go and go get lunch. Um, we're ready to, we're anxious to give it a dangle. So we brought some deer weenies um, from one of the deer that I shot. I think the deer, we yep, the weenies are, yep, in this bag, thawing out. Weenies. Oh. Dude, it's dripping. What's that? I think that's just water back there. Uh. Jalapeno cheddar weenies that made out of deer. Isn't that what you always say? A bag of wieners? Yeah, that. Hey, bag of that's a bag of wieners yeah. right there. So, and we got a little cooktop, a new one that I haven't tried out yet. So, anyways, we're going to get out, set up all the tip ups. We did bring the graph. We are only going to be using tip ups either. We have rods and reels. So, we are going to be, I've got some like little crankbaits to like rip up and jig. I mean, the idea is to have, you know, the legal amount of tip ups per person out, and then they can use a rod and reel for that, for that third line. So, that's kind of the plan right now. Now we're gonna get everything unloaded, go out into the pond and get dang on you guys. Stay tuned. All right, so we're starting off. Hole number one, right by the dam. I think just right, right on this crack. I think that's a good idea. That's pretty thick still. All right, so hole number one. Oh, uh, we've got, like I said, we've got seven tip ups, and then we will have three rods or so. So I'm gonna set out two. Um, you can have three lines with the bonus line. So I'll set out two tip ups. Banjo set out two, Zach set out two. We'll jet, same thing, kind of on and on. And then we'll each have rods to kind of actually like fish. So it's not all tip up, but tip ups fish for you. They do the work for you, they make it easy. So I'm gonna set one right here, right by the dam. I think we're just gonna string four that way, and then set a couple in these coves over here and see what happens. You got yeah, one ready, rock and roll. Yeah, I need, my, I need my little pincher. All right, so we've got the weight here. Here. And then, so I'm gonna do this is clip it onto the hook, and we're gonna set, let it, wee, all the way down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get this about a foot off the bottom. So it's about tight right there. So you're gonna have to come up about two feet. So once you get your depth figured out, bring it back up. All right, so we got a little little minner, and I like to hook them right through the dorsal, just like that. See how they they can swim? And I do have a split shot on here, just to make sure he gets down far enough. Shoot. No, Lucy, don't no hit the flag. No hitting the flag. All right, we got one up. That took like 10 minutes. Hopefully the rest of them go a little bit quicker. All right, we're setting the next one up. This one's off the point, right by the sniper tower. The reason why I'm setting it here is the channel's right over there, and I think like this would be a good... Millie, Millie, hey, you don't, do you want to get hooked, okay? <laughs> really? Wait, man. I mean, we're already in about 12 here. It's kind of right off the channel a little bit. But the idea with tip ups is you, you it's a kind of like what we do in duck hunting banjo, spray and pray. Oh really? Yeah, you just kind of go for it. So once we start getting a couple bites, you can kind of close in on the pack a little bit more. But since we haven't bass fished hey. in this pond yet for ice fishing, that we're gonna try to, oh yeah, there's a fish down there at 10, right there. We're gonna try to kind of just spray and see what happens. Dude, there's fish everywhere down there. I think this one's gonna catch one. I think this one's gonna catch one too. All right. Tip up guys. Second one's in boys. Dude, there's fish everywhere. Now they may not be largies. They could just be bluegills, but that one's like right off the bottom. So that's, that's a bottom dweller. Let's go ahead and get the rest of that out. What happened? This one went off. Is she tugging on it? No, it's there. Well, maybe. I think this thing got caught. The piece of metal got caught on it. You just throw a minnow there? Yeah. Rip. Right. It got caught. All right, we'll get a reset. We got them all out though. Got seven of them out there doing a dangle. So we got them out. We're gonna start using the rod and reel and then start cooking some weenies. All right, folks, well, tip ups are out. Everybody's dangling. Bass duty, not bluegill duty, banjo. Yeah, no, it's not happening. No, bass duty. So I'm throwing a little jig and spoon and I'm gonna actually just throw a, that's my bass dangler. So I've got the old flasher. Oh, there's fish down there, banjo. Probably not largies, but oh God, dude, this thing, oh, dude, this thing gives it a hell of a little flash. This might be, we might be in business, Millie. Hey, can you watch out so I can see a flasher? You're not really helping. Hey, I'll give you a deer weenie if you move out of the way. No, I don't have one right now. Eat later. Hey, come on, get out of the way, come on. 
Come on, come on. Oh, dude, there's so many fish down there. Yeah, and every once in a while, I'll just kind of scan, look for, look at tip ups. Oh, God, they're coming right up to it. Dude, there's so many fish down here right now. This is crazy. I just don't think they're largies. Whole school of them. Oh, got them. We're hooked up. That's got to be a largie, boys. Oh, my oh God. My. Oh, my God. Millie, watch out. Oh, it's stuck on the ice. Get off the ice. Get off the ice. Hey, watch out. Dude. Dude. Oh, my God. Nice. Oh, oh, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, Millie, Lucy, watch out. Hey. That's a pretty big one. I'm not I'm not keeping him. Yeah, I was gonna say he's a little too Look big. Look at that! That's how you do it there, son. I was sitting there going, hey, how do you catch largies? That's a good size. See, that's the size you want to keep in here. That's probably what do you think 13, 14 probably. Oh, yeah. He's a long guy. I mean that's like on like the little bit larger side he's of the skinny. Hey! Hey, no, you cannot eat him. Yeah, I, I, that's not a cold bass. That's a bass I want to keep in here. We're gonna go ahead and release this guy. Dude, first drop, crazy. He was a little deeper, I will say. Dude, he used to, as soon as he started stripping drag, I was freaking out. <laughs> that's my first ice largey of the year, boys. I'll take it. This is my favorite thing to catch by far. Hey, 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 hey. First bass of 2021 right here. Big Papa, he's got potential. Lucy, Lucy, hey, go. Get out of the way, go. See you later, buddy. Lucy, Lucy, you what? No, I don't know why I bring them. I bring them because I try to give them exercise, show them how we do things. But all they want to do is eat everything, whether it's a bluegill or bass. But it's a good start. That doesn't help our objective at all. Did I beat the tip ups? Yeah. How? They've been out for 30 minutes. We have seven of them, seven of them up there for 30 minutes. How is that even possible? I don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and throw another one on. It's a pretty big bait. But like I said, I'm, I'm targeting the bass, not the. I mean, I would move a crappie too. If we catch a, any any size crappie, can come out too. Um, but today's objective is bass. So we're going to get another minnow put on it and see if we can get another one to bite. Oh. It's a bite. Oh, that's a fish. Oh, we're hooked up. Oh, per oh, no, rip, oh, rip. Oh, you see him come up in the hole. Size. No, the hook caught the side of the hole and he came off, dude. That was like a nine incher. That would have been money. Oh, perfect. Oh, what the hell? Do that. Hey, do me a favor. Go somewhere else. <laughs> no, Lucy, 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 go play somewhere else. Sit. Good dog. All right, that's two largies. That guy would have been perfect Kohler. If you want to come catch bluegill banjo, I got the spot. Pop a hole right next to me. Give her on the other side, so that way you're, you, we've got something between you and me, like the same distance. Oh, rip, rip, rip. Oh, rip, rip, rip. It's not moving. Oh, now it is, it's running. All right, Banjo, you got this one? All right. I'll, guard, I'll get the dogs away from me. So, do I just, just... Just just pick it up slow. Okay. Grab the line. Yep. And you don't don't jerk hard. Just, yeah, just, just start going. Just start going. Yep. Just start with hand over hand. Hand over hand. Oh, yeah. It's got on. It. I feel got like something on there, Banjo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. See? It, or it's got caught on something. Just It's still fighting, though. I just don't want to break this line. Are you winning or losing, man? I'm not moving it that much. So what do you got there, Loch Ness? How big a fish you got in this pond? Or I bet, he, got, I bet he has you wrapped in a branch, I'm sure, but. But yeah, he's still on there. You can tell him he's fighting still. Yeah, don't break it, just take it easy. You think it's a bass or what? He's still there, I just felt him, he's kicking still. He's there, huh. he's there 100%. Look, he's still taking line. It broke. Rip. <sighs> he out in the Christmas tree. He felt big right away before he Did was he? even there. Yeah. He might have been, dude, the way he was just like tugging, he might have been big Sheila. Rip. Kind of close to where you you caught your big one. Yeah, true. That's, that's, like right right off that off that yeah. that's where I put that one. It's off yeah. where I caught that six pounder. Rip. Well, first official tip up bite. He got stuck in the old Christmas tree. That's the gamble you get. Like you could bump it back out a little bit away, but then you're away from the fish. So it's just kind of like one of those things. Like you could put it away from the Christmas tree, but you might not get as many bites. So anyways, we'll get this guy rigged back up, drop back down, see if we can catch fish. This one just went off. Give him a second, give him a second. Let's see if he pulls. Cause he's running that way. So he probably still has. I can I can see the loop though, though. So he's only probably drug out about a foot. Just grab it and hand, hand over hand. Yep. Pull, 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 pull. Nothing. Yeah, he's still there. Really? Thanks. Yep. Oh, oh crappie! Wow. There you go. That that work. Yeah, we'll take him out. There Good you go. Guy. The old crappie Shoot. killer. I kind of want to eat him, but we'll put, him the, we'll put him in the next pond so yeah, we can, so eat, we him can eat him later. Taking out crappie is also an, a big priority because they compete with largemouth. The goal is for this pond that we're on right now to have big largemouth and the other one to have all the fish that we love eating. Crappie. I was going to say, I could tell it wasn't a bass. Yeah, he wasn't fighting quite yeah, hard. Yeah, no. Hey, I'll take it. Banjo got the old crappie. Sure. Perfect. We'll throw him in the bucket and we'll get him transported. Dude, they just keep shooting up right at it. There's a couple big ones. Yep, he's got it. 
Got him. Bass. Bass. Andrew, we might need help here. Yep. That's definitely a largey. Just keep, yep, you just grab them. Keep, oh, Oof. yep, that's perfect size. Watch out, Lucy. Yep, yep, yep. Hey, quick. There you go. Quit. There you go. Yeah, that's the perfect hole. That is the size we are after. Dude, let's go. You're on bass it, duty today. I'm on bass duty. That's the perfect size you want to get out of here. Oh, yeah. Stunted size, he ain't yeah. do no good for nobody. There you go, Big Jim. Well, we'll see if we can catch up more and then take them over the cabin pond and get them released. Oh, the big old bluegill. Big old I knew you're on gill duty. Yep, always. That's big daddy. That's not the size you want to get rid of, though. That's the size you want to keep in here. Yep. I mean, that's actually the size you want in the other pond, but you don't want to take them out because these will actually feed the bass that we're trying to grow. So ideally, we go buy a bunch of big bluegill just like this no. and release them into Say the hi. cow pond in the no. spring. Lucy. Be nice. Be no, don't bite them. Bye-bye. See you later, Rick. Dropping down on them, boys. Let's see. Flag up. Oh, rip, 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 no, Lucy, back up, buddy. Sit down. You sit. You sit. We got robbed, boys. No minnows. I'm just not having good luck with your tip-ups. Dude, the tip-ups aren't the deal, I guess. I was raving about them. I'm doing better with the old rod and reel dangle stick. Rip. Where? Just watch. Up on the hill? Uh, they're just they're just like between the bottom and top. I'll see if they'll run to the left. Look at them all. Oh wow. Dude, whole, I, I heard something. I got out. Oh man, we got a bunch of trays. It's not turkey season, but that's about the closest I've gotten to some turkeys around here. Anyways, hey, we're at the cabin pond because the fish in the bucket are dying. Well, actually, not dying. It's just really cold water. It's a lot harder to transport fish in the. You need to have, like, I don't know, like not like super. Yeah, like almost like heat, a little heated water, which you could do if you're like an eye shack, but we don't really have time. So let's go ahead and get this cropping bass released. All right, little largey. See you later, buddy. Watch out, Lucy. Boom. It's a nice, nice crappie. It's like a good eater size. Nothing, nothing major, but see you later, dude. Well, we got the crappie and bass released. I'd like to be able to uh, release more at one time, but the but it's like the but maybe we could we do have a heater. I guess that heater has to stay on. Let's try. It. You know, because the heater's on while the cooker's on. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think we we should try. I mean, if we can heat this water up like 10 degrees, I think these fish should do a little bit better. They're just getting it's so cold that they're just super lethargic, and it just makes it to where like I'm worried that they're gonna die. So we bring them down here really quick rather than catching more fish. So anyways, let's head back up and try to catch some more and start cooking up some weenies. Andrew caught a bag. Yes, look at that. Yep. I stopped of course, using when wax. we were gone. I know, I stopped yeah, using Yeah, waxes waxer. aren't the duty. And I put a, just a little minnow on there. Yeah, throw, throw him in there. Chill in there for a little bit. Yep. All right, well, I need to cook some weenies. We're ready to cook some weenies, Banjo. So, we got one of these guys. Really? So yeah. the heater's going. So wait, how do you get the accessory mode on then? Am I stupid? Pilot lit, push control knob down, and rotate to on position. Proceed to, to the lighting instruction manual provided with your accessory. But why would this pilot light need to be on for that to work? All right, about 45 minutes later, um, we got the latest and greatest, probably the poor, most poorly designed unit I've ever seen in my life. Barely going. We're gonna throw the wieners on here. I mean, I can go in depth if you guys want me to talk about why this is so bad. I mean, I honestly, I did see a couple of YouTubes, YouTubers make videos on this and you could tell they're clearly paid because they said good things about it. Unlike me, I actually paid for it and I would never recommend something like this. I'm just throwing it out there right now. The idea is, okay, so when this thing came out, we're gonna go into a deep review because we're not catching fish right now anyway. The idea behind this little heating setup is there's a heater and then there's a cooker, right? Two in one, right? So ideally when I actually I bought it, I thought it was just one unit. And they're like, no, 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 you spent 180 bucks. You actually need to spend like another 140 to make this thing work. Okay, so I have a $300 cooktop and heater. And then when you get it hooked up, you realize that in order to run the, the cooker, you can't run the heater at the same time. This thing allows the cooker to work. So why wouldn't you just hook up the propane to the cooker? Well, now I basically just need the heater in order to run the cooker, but while I'm running the cooker, you can't run the heater. Long story short, the most poorly designed, well-marketed, I'll give them that, they got me to buy it, but I would not recommend this. And I'm not here to bash anybody. But who genuinely thought it was a good idea to sell $300 worth of heating products that only allows you to use one at a time? Like that's the whole point. In order to run the heater and the cooker at the same time, why would I, if I want to run them separately, I would just buy them separately because now they share propane and now they're going to run out of propane even faster. It really makes no sense. I thought the unit itself was a heater and a cooker, like an all in one. And it's actually two separate units that rely on one another to work. So if I just want to go out and I don't need a heater like today, right? We don't need a heater. I don't have a coat on. If I want to run this cooker, I have to bring the heater with me, even if I don't want the heater. But even if I wanted the heater, they wouldn't let you use the heater because you can't use the heater when you're running the cooker. Banjo, I am not the smartest individual on Can this Can we make earth. a beefcake one? But in about nine seconds, I could design something better. Like, 
Yeah, no, I agree. It, You're I'm, right. I'm not here to bash. I'm just here to give you my honest opinion. Absolutely not worth the money, especially the amount of money. You know, if this whole setup was 100 bucks, I'd be like, you know, it is what it is. I mean, the wieners are sizzling, so we, I guess I guess they're cooker cooks. Thank God, right? I mean, it costs like 150 bucks. I would expect that. If it was up to me, I would go buy a portable heater, and I would go buy a portable cooker. And if I need both, I'll bring both. If I need one, I'll bring one. If I need the other one, I'll bring the other one. But selling these as a kit and not letting you use them both at the exact same time, to me, makes no sense and maybe I'm just understanding this wrong but right now you, it, you're required to use the heater as well as the pilot light in the heater really does that mean I'm out so you're telling me this thing got me a half cooked wiener okay so I guess if you like sushi then yes this is a great product for you because it didn't even come close to cooking all of this this is now you gotta do your, your 10 minute light process again yeah let me let me change mag real quick <laughs> It's like playing Call of Duty. Let me change mags while I get half-cooked wieners. I'm not, this isn't supposed to be a rant video, but like, you know, being a consumer, spending $300, I'm not happy with it, honestly. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm missing something, but I don't, I don't see the point. I don't see the whole point of having to have the heater in order to run the cooker. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. Maybe you can buy an adapter that would just go straight to propane. That would make a little bit more sense. Or if anyone out there, including this company, is watching, make something that is a heater and a cooker all in one. I want to bring one one object with me that I can have it upright as a heater, flip it on its back as a cooktop. Now they make those, but they're like those weird bulky things that get really freaking hot and are annoying. That is the item that needs to be invented. Maybe it's already invented. You guys can let me in the comment section down below. We're going to see if we can get this thing fired back up. It's been about, we've literally been tinkering with this for 40 minutes is why I'm so wound up about it because it's just unbelievable. You would think these, Span th these instructions were in Spanish for how long it took us to comprehend. And I'm not saying we're the smartest individuals. How many degrees do we have? Who? Huh? Do what? How many degrees do we have? Degrees? Between the three of us. That'd be zero. Yeah, yeah. none of us are college educated, but it doesn't take a college educa educated person to realize this is a terrible design. I thought I could read a four step process. No, there's only four steps and we've been here for 45 minutes and a half, half cooked cleaners. <laughs> All right, how, how much propane do you think was in that? A quarter. Okay. Hey, hey, no, hey, no, 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 that's Bad, no, no, no. Did she lick it? No, she ate, <laughs> is it halfway down hey. her throat. Oh, hey, we're cooking. That sucks. Junior, go lay down. Hey, you go lay down. All right, well, Banjo, go catch another fish. Oh, Banjo, we're hooked up. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, little Sunny. How you doing, Rick? All right, so I'm going, you're back on bluegill duty, which is good. Oh, your uh, handle just fell off. <laughs> hey, Junior, look at your reel. Try to reel. I know. Oh, it's right down there. I know. Well, why'd you do that? I didn't do nothing. Bull crap. No. You used this last. No, 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 no. If you guys haven't noticed it, we're not getting weenies. Propane ran out. Banjo, I have one I have one question for you. And I'm again, I'm, I'm not here to bash on companies. It's just as a customer, I'm frustrated. I paid for it. I'm giving my honest opinion. Banjo, I have a question for you. <sighs> this product, everybody's saying is revolutionary, right? Who's everybody, but yeah, sure. Uh, a bunch of YouTubers. Uh, so it's re this revolution. My question is what problem did does that concept solve nothing my point being you don't have to carry two propane that's it that's, that's your the point. only thing but but you're telling a little bottle you're gonna have to carry two anyway because it takes two out of the same one you're gonna oh, have to yeah, carry two true. anyway if you're gonna cook and use the heater you're gonna run out yeah so the, the only benefit would be use, using only having to use one run propane tank otherwise prior to this insanely cool invention you would have a cooker and you would have a heater. So what is the difference? Besides me just losing three hundred dollars. It's a marketing strategy. That's all it is. There's no purpose of it. There's no there's no there's no real benefit. They I'm just you. disappointed. I wanted a deer brat, a deer winner. I, I'm starving. It's like four o'clock and none of us have eaten since freaking breakfast. I had cereal for breakfast. That's what I'm, I'm saying. I'm starving. Wait, what kind of cereal? Cement toast crunch. What else are kind would I have? Really? Fruity Pebbles guy. That is that's my second go. Lucky Charms it. also I haven't had that for a while, but that slaps. Yeah. What, what what's your favorite? You look like a Captain Crunch guy. I think I think the last cereal I had was Reese Puff. Those also slap. Those are good. Yep. All right. Anyways, I need to catch a bass. The real question is, oh, like which is a worst invention, the tip ups we're using or the <laughs> heater we bought? Let's go check the tip ups. Cause we catch one. We caught. Oh, we caught a crappie. Crappie, but no bass. No, no largies. The thing we're even after. Not, not haven't caught any. So we're gonna go pull up all the tip ups. They didn't do us much good. Hopefully, we got something on the line. All right, pulling it up. About as you expected, Lucy. Absolutely incredible. This might be too shallow. That might be why this one didn't work. Well, they're all for one. Hey. Oh, rip! We got, we, got we got robbed. How does this one not go off? This is by the... He's on there, too. It's by the bush dreams are made of. Rip. Oh, we're hooked up, Banjo. Let's go. Let's go. Let's oh, oh yeah. rip. Biggin'. Rip. 
Well, that's the last fish. If of the we day. had a cooker, we could cook this guy up. This kid's got jokes. He's got he's got jokes. Listen, I'm sensitive. I paid a lot of money for that thing, and it's not doing me a bit of good out here. All right, well, Lucy, what do you think of there, buddy? I think we should probably release this guy. That's like I said. That's the size you want. Oh yeah, that got me good there. This is the size you want in here to catch, to eat, or breed. A big anal fish. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. We were not able to catch as many bats. We gotta go. We gotta get to, with Felix. Felix has some better tip ups. Our tip ups suck. Between everybody, I think we released like there was a few bass you guys didn't see. Zach caught. I don't know. What do you think we released? Like eight? Yeah. I was gonna say around eight, eight or ten. Yeah. I mean, we're starting small. We're doing what we can. Okay. Again, it's ice fishing season. Like you might as well ice fish while you can. But catching the numbers of largies just isn't quite happening yet. We might have to wait till spring. Once it's spring and the fish are starting to bite, where we can get on a boat, we can really and you can have an actual live well. We can. Bring the big boat with the live well, the aerator, and all that stuff like that, and do it the right way. Get some of these bass out of here and do it like that. But for now, now that pond is officially stocked with predator fish. Bing largemouth has bluegill in it and has some minnows. We'll keep feeding. That's the idea. Is like throughout the winter, we'll just dump in, you know, five dozen minnows every week or something, just to make sure everything has enough food um, to sustain until we can really get it stocked full. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. We will catch you on the next one. Remember, February first, mark your calendars for the Beef K Club membership. Exclusive videos, live streams, gaming, all the goods will be available on February first. We'll see you guys next time and peace. I bought it on, like, I saw everybody doing it and I typed in, saw the flex cooker and bought it and I got it and I tried running it and saw the hose connection and thought, what the hell? So I Googled it and you have to have the heater with it. I literally bought the cooker thinking it would cook by itself. Cause why the f would you need a heater to cook? It makes no fing sense. God damn it. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write a Yelp review or something on these. Okay, Karen.